Hey, what's going on, guys? So I wanted to get on camera real quick and address what's happening in the oil markets. Have a lot of people hitting us up right now saying, hey, why the hell is oil going down to negative pricing? So figured that we get on here, explain what's happening a little bit. So first off, um, you know, expected oil to go down to single digits this week. Didn't think that it was going to be this drastic. Um, I think we've seen anywhere down to negative $35 for WTI today. So how does that work? How do you have negative pricing? We'll talk about that a little bit and talk about what the future holds for oil and gas. So let's dive into CME real quick. This is CME's website. This is the marketplace for WTI futures. So if you look at this top line, this is May 2020. This is your front facing contract. So this is what your spot price is. And you can see that the last price was negative $25.61. If you look over here at the prior, we opened up at $18.27 today. So we've had a $43.88 drop in one day. So this is a very extreme. But what this is saying is that all oil and gas futures contracts or all oil contracts here on the CME for WTI are settled in Cushing, Oklahoma. So what this means is if, if you had a barrel of oil and you wanted to sell it, you took it up to Cushing, Oklahoma, and you wanted to sell it, you'd have to pay them $25.70 just to hold that barrel of oil for you. So when you think about the settle price in Cushing, obviously if you're producing oil down in West Texas, it's going to cost you money to transport it up to Oklahoma, right? So there's usually a differential uh, pricing. So I think West Texas usually runs around uh, an additional negative $5. So if we're showing negative $26.58 in Cushing, Oklahoma right now, we're probably somewhere around negative $31 out in West Texas. So when you look at, you know, it's scary, it's scary to think about, right? Um, these oil and gas companies have already been having distressed balance sheets, have had a hard time operating in this current low price environment. Now you're looking at, well, every barrel of oil that we bring out of the ground, we have to pay for. The thing that you want to look at though, is we want to go to the back end of the curve. So if we look here at December, 2020 and January, 2021, we're showing 32.91 and 33.57 respectively. So the back end of the curve still has a lot of support. And essentially what this is saying is that the market believes that here within the next, you know, six to seven months, the market's going to recover in terms of demand and oil prices will stabilize in the $30 range. Now, a lot of people are bringing up the, the Trump oil deal and what's happening with OPEC and OPEC's cutting. Why is this happening? Look, pre-COVID, we were at around 100 million barrels of oil consumption a day. That was demand. OPEC decided to cut 10 million barrels a day. And right now, I think that we're somewhere around 60 to 70 million barrels of oil demand per day. So if OPEC cuts 10 million and we were at you know $100 million demand, there's still a huge market or a, a gap in the market, right? We have this glut and there's literally nowhere for oil to be stored. And we were already seeing this last week. I mean, this was a, a huge issue last week, but prices weren't reflecting that there was a lag in the, in the futures market. And now that lag is catching up. And today you're seeing that reflected in the markets that, Hey, there's just nowhere to put this shit. There's nowhere for the oil to go. It can't go to Cushing. Cushing has nowhere, nowhere to put it. So that's why they're charging you, you know, negative 25 to negative $35 to store it on the, the topic of the cuts. The railroad commission had a hearing last week with se several CEOs from shell companies and midstream companies talking about, uh, you know, production cuts in Texas. Well, the government, you know, that's a process that's going to take a long time. Now these oil companies are going to have forced shut ins. They're going to have to shut in their wells. You can't operate in this environment. Um, but you know, once, once we get over the COVID pandemic, we should see an increase in demand. Once we see that increase in demand, OPEC is still going to have to support the market. You know, they'll probably keep in their $10 million or their 10 million barrel per day cuts that they've enforced. And you'll start to see that price stabilization of $30 out in the next, uh, 
you know, six, six to 12 months. Yeah. One thing to understand too, is that a lot of these EMPs are hedged also. So they're using financial instruments like these futures in the market and they have hedges, you know, for the next year. So what they're probably going to do is they're going to shut down operations, you know, shut down their well so that they're not losing money on those. And then they've got this, um, you know, bag of money over here from their hedges. So good thing is EMPs are hedged. The back end of the Ford curve is showing price support, you know, the $30 range. So over the next year, it looks like, you know, things will be, will be solid and we'll have some type of floor.